gonna be a good boy. Gonna be a good boy for everyone at home watching. Yeah, good boy. Hi everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Warren Bennett, and if you've been to the channel before, you know uh, the mad thing down there is called Trev. So hopefully it will keep you entertained um, as well as hopefully this video as well. So <laughs> I can't concentrate, it's just a rolling around the garden. Anyway, so this video is all about something called SMART. SMART is going to mean um, five different things that you can take on the golf course straight away to hopefully improve your round, hopefully improve your golf consistency and hopefully enjoyment as well. So um, as you know by now, I'm going to get the front camera set up, try to roll Trevor out the way and uh, we'll get going after that. See you in a bit. Rightio, so let's get going and uh, welcome to another video. If you've been to the channel before and you like this type of content, I'd love you if you could like, press the like button. What that does, it tells YouTube that the Academy is on YouTube and it kind of hopefully promotes it a little bit more as well. Okay, so SMART, so it's an acronym. So it's set, motion, arms, release and tension. Now that's a mixture of a little bit of um, mechanics and some of those are kind of a little bit more feel based and a little bit easier to do um, but it's a kind of an all-rounder for you to take onto the golf course straight away now smart golf obviously meaning mainly to me is good course management hitting the right club making sure you're kind of plotting your way around the golf course as best as you can so let's start off with number one so let's start off with set very important to especially more so with the irons because an iron you need a little bit more kind of downward strike into the ball so you really want to try and hit that ball first obviously with the driver you're doing that as well but because it's up on the, up on the tee it needs a bit more of a sweep so with an iron especially you're looking for a little bit of set what I mean by set is wrists is getting some wrists into your swing halfway back so I would say by the time your hands get a bit about hip height about pocket height you need to start feeling these wrists setting like that so it doesn't have to be ridiculous you don't have to be kind of overdoing it and you need don't need to be acute that way but you really need to feel and trying to get some height some natural height in this club now from the behind view you're looking for this kind of corridor this kind of v-shaped corridor to set this club into that's obviously very vertical and probably overdone steep that's going to be too flat so you're looking for something that you can see with that little V there. You're looking for something in between this kind of little corridor, little Goldilocks zone we've got here. You can create quite a lot of natural length by using your wrists. If I didn't use my wrist, you can see where the club goes there. You can still swing the club well from there, but you've just then got to do a little bit more of a, we'll say a Sergio Garcia, creating that kind of lag on the way down, which is good, but it's more difficult to do for the club golfer. So creating a little bit of set, for the S, getting some natural height. Obviously there's a blend of your kind of your torso coil as well, but mainly it's finding a, that kind of little bit of set motion there to get the club behind your head and you can have a nice short arm swing, but a long club head swing. So the hands are only going here, but the club's behind you. So you can see now my arms have got a much shorter distance to get down to the ball, much less to go wrong and the club is still now behind you because if you've got this set in your wrist here, you've got something to keep on the way down. And it's like a continuous, by the, hand, by the time my hands get to about here, I'd say, as you can see, my wrists start to set the club as well as obviously everything else and there's your blend. So I would say the first one is being able to have a little bit of wrist set so you've got something to keep and then release. Before I get on to M, we'll go and hit one. So. I'm going to feel nice and light in my grip. I'm going to feel a little bit in my fingers. So the more you can get the club in your fingers, the more you're able to use your wrists and set the club. If I had my hands ridiculously in my palms, I'm limiting my range of motion there. So the more you can get the club in your fingers, wrap your hands around the club, and that gives you a bit more range of motion with your wrists. Okay, let's hit one. Nice and light, feel the club heavy. And hopefully it'll be in that Goldilocks zone, as you can see with that free freeze frame. Okay, let's get on to the second one, M. And M is for motion. Now, golf swing is a motion, we're moving. There's a lot of body parts and there's a lot of things going on, isn't there, in that split second, in that one to two seconds of the golf swing. And you wanna try and blend that motion up. And it's not really having anything too static. 
the more you can keep that flow, there's another word for it as well, the easier it is to blend these body parts together. And what I've said in the past is the golf swing or a body is made up in three separate areas for a golf swing, legs, body, arms, and hands. And some areas of the golf swing move more than others. So that the backswing, I would say it's a bit more body and then you're using the arms in the second half. Um, depending on your range of motion, if you want to use a bit more arms on the way down, instead of too much body, depending on what your fault is, then go for that. But I really recommend blending these body parts together. And motion is one of those. Remember, there's no static, there's no stopping, really light, and you can do some practice swings. Remember, you're building up. So the motion of a golf swing is you're starting off in first gear and moving through the gears in the back swing till about here and then you're ready to kind of unleash everything kind of around this arc. I would say hip height to hip height. You're not looking to unleash the speed at the top of the back swing. So keep the motion nice and relaxed and then you're introducing a little bit more speed down the bottom. You're not looking for the speed up here. So motion and flow is really about keeping the the rhythm to your golf swing. And I'm gonna give you an example. Um, you may have played with someone, I've played with many people who have said, oh, I'm just gonna lay up. I'm just gonna hit this nice and soft. It won't get there. I'll just lay up if you're waiting for the green to clear. Nice and soft and you feel like you've just tapped it and the ball's gone miles and on the green or much further than you thought anyway. Because what's actually happening there is the thing I call less is more. You're moving less, but more's happening down the bottom. So that's flow, that's rhythm. And in golf, you don't have to feel like you're putting the effort in. That's the secret, you see. And I'm gonna get onto that later in the video. But yeah, so motion and flow. Keep everything nice and balanced and nice and flowing. There's no stopping, there's no jerking, there's no quick change of tempo and, and speed. You're keeping everything nice and flow. And if you wanna introduce a little bit of zip, down there is where it happens, not at the top of the backswing. So obviously for the acronym, I've had to keep it with an M, <laughs> so I've had to go with motion, but flow is a really good one. And I would say change your direction, so seven eighths of the way up at the top of the backswing to kind of the third on the way down, that's when the problems happen. That's when it gets too quick, especially under pressure a little bit, or wind into. So keep it nice and smooth, nice and relaxed, and that's one of the secrets where you can hit good balls on the range and on the golf course, you're really struggling to hit a good shot because you get it, everyone gets a little bit quick because it gets target orientated. So let me show you, nice and smooth, keeping it through the gears on the backswing, and then speed up on the way through. Okay, so second one is M, and let's get onto the third one, which is an A. Okay, so A is arms. Um, and just for reference, some bits of the video will talk to you more than others. You don't have to do all these things. So arms in the golf swing is so important, especially if you're going into your latter years um, you, and you want to keep your speed and keep your distance. Being able to have an effective arm swing is so important. Too many people, too many club golfers are body orientated and they don't create the speed they're looking for down the bottom because they feel like they're putting in the effort, they feel like they're moving a lot, and really putting in a lot of effort, but down there there's no speed. There's no speed in the body. There's a limited amount anyway, but there's more speed in arms and hands. And that's where a little bit of set comes in as well because you can create that natural length and you've got something to release. But being able to have an effective arm swing is so important in the golf swing. Now, if you're able to move your body, move your body. But remember, those three ingredients, uh, legs, body, arms, and hands, you're looking to incorporate all those. But if you're not able to use your body, or if you're over the top, or you've got too much motion in your top half, then you need more of an effective arm swing to counterbalance that. So having an effective arm swing can really maintain your distance and speed into your latter years. And if you're struggling mechanically, let's say you're over the top, that probably means you're too body orientated on the way down. So get a good, efficient arm swing. You might need to feel a little bit more arm swing than body if that's the case. So one exercise you would have seen me do on, on many um, videos is the arm uh, feet together exercise. 
And now if you move your body too much, you're going to fall over because you have now haven't got a base. So just stand there and make a long swing either side of the ball. What I mean by that is get the club behind your head and get the club behind your head. You can still cheat, but there's no length, you see. So you're looking for the club and your hands to kind of be up here. And then you're looking for your arms and club to be folding around your neck at the back swing and the follow through with good balance. And that's the secret. And you can just stand there and do 100 practice swings a day. The more, the narrower you have the feet, the harder it is, obviously. You can get a little bit of kick in here, tiny bit of weight transference, but obviously it's really limited now. So automatically my body's not gonna be able to move, so I'm gonna to have to use my arms. There's my third ingredient there, remember? In the legs, body, arms, and hands. And then you can just hit balls. You don't have to be full out to start with. Keep the balance. If you're losing the, whoop, if you're losing balance, you know you've probably move too much and especially early doors if you're if you are that tendency to move if you have that tendency to move i mean it will take a little bit of time and you can take a little bit of pace off it give you a bit of awareness time nice and smooth you see it's a it's an exercise that i worked on when i was a little one. it's a no-brainer because it's giving you immediate feedback so making feet together exercises one of your practice routines i'd really recommend it because it's automatically improves your arm swing and then you can slowly kind of have your feet further apart or you can go from feet together and then you can hit one normal and that gives you that sensation of a, a little bit more of an educated arm swing so important like i said to create that natural speed down the bottom a lot of pros are looking for the opposite because they've got too much arm swing, got too much hook, too much hands and arms. So they're looking for a little bit more body orientated swing. I would be in that camp left to my own devices. I have too much arm swings. I'm really looking forward to some, really looking for some more pivot. I mean, really get some body pivot because I need to work on that area. But majority of people and the ball will tell you if you're lacking the distance or if it's slicing, or you're not creating the correct speed you're looking for and the consistency of strike, I would definitely work on that kind of arm swing, definitely. Okay, so that's A. Whoops. Oh, sounds like we've got some workers outside. So, so let's get on to the next one, which is R. Okay, R. R is for release. Now, if you're creating a nice set, now you've got something to release. And how we release is really important, especially if you're a slicer of the ball. What you're looking for in a release, you're looking for your hand to roll 180 degrees. There are different types of release. I'm going to only go on hand release for this one. There is body and leg release, which I'll go on to future videos, that's for sure. And there are videos in the channel that shows you how to body release properly as well. So I'm just going to now just focus on hand release, hand and arm release. So being able to have an effective hand release will stop your slicing and it will introduce a little bit more speed down there, a little bit more distance for every club. So I can use my hands quite effectively, and it's a really overlooked area of the goal swing because a lot of pros don't want to have any wrists in their swing. If you're not an elite player, I would definitely introduce a little bit more hand speed, a little bit more release. There's a rolling action from your hand looking, let's say, at the front camera to the hand now looking behind me. That happens in a very short space of time, so I would introduce some nice slow motion swings. I've got a six iron here, but I would introduce like a nine iron, eight iron, a little bit more of a narrow stance. Make sure you've got a bit of set, so you've got something to release. You can see the angle there, and now you're kind of delaying it. And then from here, you're really feeling like your right hand is really rolling over very quickly. It's basically you're doing this, but obviously there has to be some motion of the hand as well. So start off and just by opening your hand, facing away from you, facing towards you. That is a hand release. That's all you're doing in the golf swing, but obviously you're introducing some arm swing to that. So let's feel like you're just rolling your hand from what's facing away from you to facing into you with a little bit of arm swing. Away from you, into you. When you go to the range, if you're suffering from a slice or you want a bit more speed, make your objective to hit every shot with some draw spin on it. Even if it goes left, don't worry about it for now. All your objective is to take away the left to right spin or the right to left if you're obviously left-handed. So keeping some rotation of your hands is really important. 
Remember the three ingredients that I said at the start of the, the uh, video? Legs, body, arms and hands. This is hands, really getting your hands working over each other. Now obviously that isn't your release, that isn't everything because obviously you need to introduce some motion of the hands, arms and body as well and legs. But if I introduce this kind of rolling and this rolling over of the right hand and there's a trap to fall into by the way which I'm going to tell you in a minute is there we go. Now you can't go through a golf swing or a golf course like that all day obviously but that is what I call an internal release. That's what's happening and you can't feel it so you can do little practice swings at home just by feeling your hand away from you and then hand into you and obviously you're introducing a bit of arm swing as well. And then obviously if I introduce some body, you can see it's now looking like a normal golf swing. But down there, that's actually happening and the release is happening. So one trap I see golfers fall into, who I've taught anyway, I've introduced a bit more release and I've got them to kind of hit the first two, three balls. They introduce too much shoulder because they feel like they want to introduce this shoulder or they've had too much in the past. So being nice and still with the body, that range, the range of motion with your hands and arms won't be very much because of that, but don't get tempted into using too much body whilst you're releasing. You're keeping it nice and steady. You can introduce a bit of turn on the backswing, that's for sure, but you're keeping your turn on the downswing and follow through limited. You're really feeling like your hands and arms are dominating and taking over. You can see there from the front view, or probably both views actually, how still I'm keeping. And the hands and arms are doing all the work. I'll put a few slow mos of that and then you can start hitting golf balls like that. So I'll show you. So take a bit of pace off it because introducing speed is limiting the amount of time, obviously, that you've got to release. Nice and smooth, nice and smooth. You can see there with the slow motion how much my hands are rolling over. And then you can speed that up. That's the secret, speed that up a little bit. You can see I'm still looking down. Forget about where it goes for now because you're working on mechanics. So this area of release is really working on the kind of internal, especially internal release, that's for certain. Okay, so there's many, many videos on the channel about release because it is one of the hardest things. There's, I could go on for hours and I will probably do specific videos in the future as well about the release as well. And especially body release, like I said, not everyone suffers from a lack of arms. Some people have too much, especially the elite players, professional, they need more body pivot to go through the ball. So I'll go on to that in the future as well. So anyway, that's R, let's get on to the final one, which is T. Okay, so the final letter is T and that's for tension. And the biggest question or the most common question I got asked, why can't I take my range swing to the golf course? And there's many factors of that. Stating the obvious, there's obviously a, a flag and a hole out there tempting you out there. There's more hazards. It's obviously narrower. Um, so there's a lot of outside factors that are changing your internal. So the secret to that is you can't change that out there. We know there's a card in your back pocket potentially. There's no, there's hazards, there's waters, there's bunkers, um, there's people watching, whatever it is. It's obviously more difficult. When you're hitting into a field and you've got a bucket of balls and instinctively you know you've got more chances after this one, it's obviously more easier. Is that, what, is that right English? Obviously more easier. Anyway, so, but the positive, if you can hit good shots on the range, that you definitely, definitely then can hit good shots on the golf course. You just got to transfer that over. And one of the biggest things is tension. If you can lighten up your grip, that's going to soften your arms, soften your shoulders, nice deep breaths before you hit the ball, and then off you go. So one thing I would say is make sure you exhale out before you hit it. Now, obviously that's not going to be a, you know, you don't have to go crazy. It's just a nice, soft internal exhale. So nice and relaxed. And before I hit the ball, I always just have a breath out. So there's no air, no holding my breath or anything like that. So I'm not going, and then at the end, oh, I've played golfers with that with a big sigh at the end and they're holding all this in. Because if you have air inside you, if you're taking a breath in and haven't, you, you're kind of, you're, it's tight anyway, isn't it? But if you breathe out, everything goes a bit soft your neck goes soft, so it just helps. But the biggest thing is your hands, because the only thing holding onto the golf club. So if you can have your hands nice and light, it makes the club go heavy, and that helps with the swing. Now back in the day, 
years ago as a teenager, me and my brother, my brother was a really, really good junior golfer, played England, Great Britain and Ireland. Um, we had an old club, like a wooden club, and we drilled bolts into it. Dad had all these old bolts and we drilled bolts into it. We put sand down the shaft, um, lead tape, as much as we could find to make this club heavy. And what that's actually doing, that's actually making the club swing around us. We're not trying to swing it. So too many people who lack that speed, like I said earlier, have too much effort and the club isn't swinging. Remember, it's a golf swing. And to help that, take your tension out of the hands. It makes the club go heavy. So first thing, or one of the two things I always used to say is nice and light grip throughout the whole swing, remember. Don't get sucked into having a nice light grip and then just before you take it back, you squeeze the petrol out of it. So it's keeping it kind of two out of 10, three out of 10, throughout the whole swing. The pressure in the grip should be in these last three fingers. Everything else after that should be just going along for the ride. So they should be kind of taking the brunt of the control, I would say. It's still not ridiculously hard, but it's enough for it doesn't slip out your hands. But everything else after that, I would say with me, is a two or three out of 10. So keeping it that way all the way through the swing, and that's what you can do. Go to the range and see if you can test yourself. All the way through, you'll be surprised how difficult that is, because by the time you get to about here, you'll probably feel like you'll want to start to grip it a little bit harder, and that's where the problems can start, can't they? So keeping the club light will make it go heavy, and keeping your hands light will make the club go heavy, and that'll introduce a little bit more natural speed down there. And just to reiterate, if you can hit a good shot on the range, that's great because that means your mechanics and you are there, but it's just on the golf course. It's just difficult. It is chalk and cheese, but these little things can really help. Nice exhale out, nice and soft, everything light. Make your jaw go light. Um, don't hold your tension, don't squeeze your teeth together. Keep it nice and light, everything light. People don't know you're doing that. That's the great thing. And that's why you see these pros on the first tee, let's say, I don't know, Ryder Cup, for instance, or majors. These pros look like they're in control, don't they? They look quite settled and, um, and not nervous, but they are. When they, when they tell you afterwards, I was shaking, you go, wow. Because internally they're going through these things and I can guarantee they're doing these little tips as well. That is for certain. There's no way they're standing on that first tee and they're gripping it hard. They shouldn't do anyway. Okay, so that's smart for you. So that's set, where are we? Motion, arms, release, and tension. So you're doing all those five things. Like I said at the very start, you don't need to do those five things, but it just helps to take these kind of tips um, out on the golf course to help you play better golf and more enjoyable golf. Okay, everyone, so thanks very much for watching. Bit of a longer video normally. I'd not like to keep them between 10 and 15 minutes, but obviously with this acronym, this SMART, I'm gonna to have to go a little bit deeper in time. But I really appreciate if you've made it this far, thank you very much. And the channel is here to give you a different perspective of um, mechanics, because obviously there's gonna be some videos that are quite deep into the mechanics and quite complicated sometimes, but I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible for the golfer to understand and take out onto the golf course themselves. Because out on the golf course, four hours, hopefully, it's gonna be a long time out there, isn't it? And, and when the wheels come off a little bit, and they always do, and like I always say, the best teacher in the world is that golf ball. And we need to understand why does it strike that way? Why is it going that way? Why is it starting? Why is it spinning that way? Or what's actually happening? So you need to kind of have that time between your shots to kind of have a think about what are your go-tos, what works, and why is it doing that, and then how can I fix it? And hopefully the channel is here to kind of give you that insight and give you that knowledge, hopefully. Not everyone, not every video is for everyone, that is for certain. Everyone's in different physical capabilities and the different standards, that's for sure. But okay, everyone, so if this is the channel that you'd like to look of, if this is the first time you've been here, I'd love you to consider subscribing. Um, it does a number of things. If I put the odd video up, some of the old bonus video, which I do sometimes, it alerts you to when that video is and comes onto the channel. And selfishly, a little bit, it helps me. If it kind of pushes the channel, it tells YouTube that the Academy is here and hopefully it can help more golfers as well. So I'd really appreciate doing that. And that's the same for the like button. It's absolutely free. You don't need to pay anything when you subscribe. It's just uh, 
a free service that YouTube give people to kind of alert them that they can watch future videos as well. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you very much. And that goes to anyone who's commented, liked, shared. Thank you very much for your support. And the channel is here to hopefully make you enjoy golf. Um, it comes from a bit of frustration from myself and my own personal experience when I was playing. I never really knew where that golf ball was going. So I'm playing this high pressured and um, financially straining kind of golf at the golf course, going to these beautiful countries, playing these fantastic events, but I was stressed because I didn't know where the golf ball was going. And it's the worst feeling, isn't it? It's the worst feeling if you're playing the club championship, your local medal, just playing with your mates. It's a long time out there, isn't it, when it goes wrong? So I have that sympathy with people that are struggling. So, because I've been there, all right, I might have played the odd event here and there and done half decent, but the majority of the time I struggled out there internally because I didn't know where that golf ball was going. And it gets you after a while, doesn't it? And this is where the channel has been born and the academy has been born. Okay, everyone, I'll stop rabbiting now. Wow, oh, it's a long one. So anyway, from myself and Trev, who's a enjoying the sun over there we'll see you on the next video have a great golfing week if you want to chuck a comment i'll get back to you as soon as i can so until the next time from myself and trev we'll see you then have a great golfing week cheerio oh hello trev making appearance now old boy